<clears throat> the rules of the committee, which apply to all nominees, require that they be sworn in in connection with their testimony. So if you would rise and raise your right hand, Congresswoman. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give to the Senate Committee on Energy and Natural Resources shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Absolutely. You may be seated. Uh, I'm going to ask you three questions addressed to each nominee before this committee. So will you be available to appear before the committee and other congressional committees to represent department uh, positions and respond to issues of concern to the Congress? Yes, Chairman. Are you aware of any personal holdings, investments, or interests that could cons constitute a conflict of interest or create the appearance of such a conflict should you be confirmed and assume the office to which you have been nominated by the president? No, Chairman. Are you involved or do you have any assets held in a blind trust? No, sir. Thank you. Um, we're going to start with our questions now, and I'll take the liberty of asking a few questions, and we'll... Oh, I'm so sorry. You go ahead and make your opening statement. Then we'll move to the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chairman's just getting used to this job. Guatsi, hopa, duhiname, itzatuitsa, shuimi hanu. Chairman Manchin, Ranking Member Barrasso, members of the committee, thank you so much for having me here today. I wouldn't be here without the love and support of my child, Soma, my partner, Skip, who is with me this morning, sitting behind me, my mom, Mary Toya, who is watching from Isleta Pueblo, my extended family, and generations of ancestors who have sacrificed so much so I could be here today. I acknowledge that we are on the ancestral homelands of the Nacotchtank, Anacostan, and Piscataway people. As many of you know, my story is unique. Although today I serve as a member of Congress and was the vice chair of the House Natural Resources Committee, if confirmed, I would be the first Native American to serve as cabinet secretary. This historic nature of my confirmation is not lost on me, but I will say it's not about me. Rather, I hope this nomination would be an inspiration for Americans moving forward together as one nation and creating opportunities for all of us. As the daughter of a Pueblo woman, I was taught to value hard work. My mother is a Navy veteran, was a civil servant at the Bureau of Indian Education for 25 years, and she raised four kids as a military wife. My dad, the grandson of immigrants, was a 30-year career Marine who served in Vietnam. He received the Silver Star and is buried at Arlington National Cemetery. I spent summers in Mesita, our small village on Laguna Pueblo, the location of my grandparents' traditional home. It was there that I learned about my culture from my grandmother by watching her cook and by participating in traditional feast days and ceremonies. It was in the cornfields with my grandfather where I learned the importance of water and protecting our resources, where I gained a deep respect for the earth. As a military family, we moved every few years when I was a kid, but no matter where we lived, my dad taught me and my siblings to appreciate nature, whether on a mountain trail or walking along the beach. I'm not a stranger, stranger to the struggles many families across America face today, I've lived most of my adult life paycheck to paycheck. I've pieced together health care for me and my child as a single mom, and at times relied on food stamps to put food on the table. It's because of these struggles that I fully understand the role Interior must play in the President's plan to build back better, to responsibly manage our natural resources, to protect them for future generations, so that we can continue to work, live, hunt, fish, and pray among them. I understand how important the department is for all the stakeholders who rely on it and the communities whose economies are connected to it. I know the bipartisan accomplishments of this committee stand out in Congress. Your work led to Interior having significant resources and authorities, especially with the Great American Outdoors Act and the Public Lands Package. I will work collaborati collaboratively with all members of this committee to ensure these acts are implemented well. As chair of the Subcommittee on National Parks, Forests, and Public Lands, I also worked on these issues in Congress and listened to all of my colleagues and constituents about ways to improve management of the department. 
I am proud of the bipartisan manner in which we move these bills through my subcommittee and to the House floor. As I've learned in this role, there's no question that fossil energy does and will continue to play a major role in America for years to come. I know how important oil and gas revenues are to critical services, but we must also recognize that the energy industry is innovating and our climate challenge must be addressed. Together, we can work to position our nation and all of its people for success in the future. And I am committed to working cooperatively with all stakeholders and all of Congress to strike the right balance going forward. As part of this balance, the Dem Department has a role in harnessing the clean energy potential of our public lands and to create jobs and a new economic opportunities. The President's agenda demonstrates that America's public lands can and should be engines for clean energy production. President Biden also knows that restoring and conserving our lands through a civilian climate core has the potential to spur job creation. If confirmed, I will work my heart out for everyone. The families of fossil fuel workers who help build our country, ranchers and farmers who care deeply for their lands, communities with legacies of toxic pollution, people of color whose stories deserve to be heard, and those who want jobs of the future. I vow to lead the Interior Department ethically and with honor and integrity. I will listen to and work with members of Congress on both sides of the aisle. I will support Interior's public servants and be a careful steward of taxpayer dollars. I will ensure that the Interior Department's decisions are based on science. I will honor the sovereignty of tribal nations and recognize their part in America's story. And I'll be a fierce advocate for our public lands. I believe we all have a stake in the future of our country, and I believe that every one of us, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, shares a common bond. Our love for the outdoors and a desire and obligation to keep our nation livable for future generations. I carry my life experiences with me everywhere I go. It's those experiences that give me hope for the future. If an indigenous woman from hum humble beginnings can be confirmed as Secretary of the Interior, our country holds promise for everyone. Finally, I want to give special thanks to you, Chairman Manchin, for calling this hearing today and for sharing with me the issues and needs of the people that you represent in West Virginia. If confirmed, I will listen to all of the people represented by members of this committee and this Congress. I'm grateful for your time today, and I'm ready to serve. And thank you, Senator Heinrich, for your kind introduction, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Congressman Holland. And